extra hour of sleep, so really no excuse at this point, right? Uh, so I'll introduce guys in a minute, but we're going to start with the tune that you probably know. It's a song called Sugar.
you. Good night. <laughs> no. Um, oh, so we have Greg Vale on saxophone. Uh, the lovely and talented Chris Barron is on keys. Uh, this guy. Uh, uh. Ah, Dave Murdy on guitar. Dave. <laughs> Dave's not here. And Baba Elefante on bass. I'm Tom Dante, and it's hap I'm happy to be here. Uh, let's see, what are we going to do next? Here's a song that's more famously known by its cover version. Uh, but there was an original, and it's really good. And we're going to be more like the original. Um, here we go. Got a black magic woman Got a black magic woman I got a black magic woman Got me so blind I can see Black magic woman, she trying to make a devil out of me. Turn your back on me, baby. Don't turn your back on me, baby. No, don't turn your back on me, baby. Stop messing around with your tricks. Don't turn your back on me, baby. Just my break of my magic stick. Got your spell on me, baby. Got your spell on me, baby. Yes, you got your spell on me. Turn my heart into stone. I need you so bad. I'm black woman, I can't leave you.
was Black Magic Woman. That was originally written by Peter Green, who was the original right. guitarist of Fleetwood Mac. That's right. Uh, Dave is going to lead a tune for us. Yeah. Well, all right. Dave is doing the all-important practice of tuning. We like that in this band. Extremely important. Right. A little painful to wait for, but right. more painful to listen to if you don't. <laughs> nice. This is a, uh, a song made famous by the late, great Billie Holiday. Uh, it was also covered later on by Blood, Sweat, and Tears, but I think you'll recognize it. your hand They that's not you lose So the Bible says And it's still the news Cause Papa may have And Mama may have But God bless the child that's got his own that's got his own Seems like the strong get more While the weak ones fade Empty pockets don't ever Make the grave Cause mama may have Papa me hell But God bless a child who's got his own Don't you know the gill Breads and things and such You can help yourself
patience, don't you know the guilt? Breads and things and such, you can help yourself, but don't take too much, cause mama may have, and papa may have. But God bless a child who can stand up and say, hey, 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 I got my, I, I got my own. Yeah, a child's got to have his own. Greg Vale on tenor saxophone. Yeah, baby. So even though we've all known each other for years, um, this is actually the first time we've all five played together. So uh, we're making up a lot of it as we go, but, you know, great songs kind of lend themselves to that. So Greg is going to lead us in our next one. What do you have for us, Greg? We're going to do Equinox.
Okay, here's a song that uh, isn't done fairly often here. It's written by a great American songwriter, not typically within the jazz category. Um, it's a song written by John Fogarty, and uh, it's, it's a great tune. Loved it all my life. Here we go. This is Long As I Can See the Light. Put a candle in the window 
I'll be coming home soon Long as I can see the light I Pack my bag Now let's get moving Because I'm bound to drift a while When I'm gone You don't have to worry too long As long as I can see the light I've got a traveling bone Cause this feeling won't leave me alone But I won't, won't Won't be losing my way, no As long as I can see the light Dante on that vocal, yeah. Yeah, it's an old Creedence Clearwater tune. Love that song. Um, Here's a tune I'm sure you all know. Most of you know. Some of you know. Maybe one person knows. I don't know. Tune called Blue Bossa. Hopefully, yeah. The sax player yeah. knows it, and that's really that's all that matters. Knows that we're in good shape. 
me to do a little intro? Well, yeah. I'll set it up.
just like we knew it. Perfect. Exactly like we practiced. Okay, uh, that was Blue Bossa. Uh, let's see here, what are we doing next? Um, Greg's going to lead another one. And we thought that this one maybe would have been nice had Greg written it, but, but he did not, unfortunately. Hello, hello. This song is on my last CD, which is still really old now because uh, it came out like 
I don't know, like the beginning of this century, <laughs> not anywhere near 2020. It's like, like 12 years, 15 years old. This song was written by Ramsey Lewis, and it's a really cool song. It's called The In Crowd, and it always goes out to our group that come out because those are the smart people, The In Crowd. You're here. And I do want to thank the people that are watching online because I know we've got a lot of people watching online and just logging in, getting ready to watch the radio show that's coming on a little later now that all the schedule's changed and the sun's changed and the time's changed. So uh, thank you to our online viewers also. And please remember that you can pop on even those of you that are here, if you're not here, you can pop on online and see the show, the whole darn show. It's pretty cool. So uh, uh, that's on the Campus Jacks uh, Facebook page and the Jacks Hideaway Facebook page. And a lot of times it's running also on YouTube. And uh, so it's running in a bunch of places, and we get a lot of people signing in online and commenting and stuff. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to go back later and watch, too. So you can see the show later tonight if you want to. But this is a song entitled The In Crowd, written by Ramsey Lewis. And if we're feeling narcissistic, we can watch it too. Right. <laughs> right. Wait, is that narcissistic? Not, not necess no, no. I'm sorry, not narcissistic, but, uh, well, here you go.
Hey, everybody. Happy Sunday evening and uh, welcome to November, everybody. My name is Tony Guerrero. This is Steamers Jazz at Jack's, our our, uh, 33rd, I believe, 33rd streaming show since this whole craziness began. And uh, I'm doing it solo tonight. Terrence had to report to his parole officer, so we're going to give him the night off tonight, and we're going to uh, we're gonna do this alone. Right now, you've been listening to the Tom Dante Quintet, which is uh, a bunch of great guys that uh, I have the pleasure of knowing and playing with over the years. Tom Dante on drums, Greg Vale on sax, Dave Murdy on guitar, Baba Elefante on bass, and Chris Barron on keyboards. And they're still going right now. It's the first time we've offered like a prelude to this show. Some We've been doing uh, afterglow shows. And now because of the time change, we're going to do it beforehand uh, when we do these. So that's what's going on now. We're going to see what happens. And then uh, after, uh, after we hear a little bit more from Tom Dante's group, we're going to be visited uh, by a couple of great friends of mine and wonderful musicians, guitarist Blake Aaron and bass player Daryl Williams. So a few things. I want to walk you through some of the schedule of upcoming dates and make sure you have your ticket buying fingers ready right now. Uh, beginning with this Thursday is my group, not my regular band, but I'm bringing in a group. I'm calling it the Pretty Dang Good Band because this is a pretty dang good band. Let me just tell you who's in my band this Thursday, aside from me, which really should be enough reason for you to buy a ticket. But Bill Cantos will be playing piano and singing. Sal Lozano will be playing saxophone. Grant Geisman will be playing guitar. Uh, Lyman Medeiros on bass. John Ferraro on drums. This is basically a whole night of headlining superstars all playing in a band together. And uh, uh, so I'm really excited about that. So I hope you'll join us uh, the next week after that. Oh, uh, Sunday, November 8th, the prelude, uh, like like what Tom D- Dante is doing now, the prelude show is going to be Lori Bell with Josh Nelson, Alex Frank, and Gene Coy. And then on Thursday, November 12th, we're going to have Elena and George Gilliam with the Gilliam Quintet. Then, on Thursday, November 13th, Sal Lozano, who I just mentioned is playing with me, will be here with his own group at Campus Jacks, and uh, it's a group called All In, and they're amazing, of course. Uh, Sunday, November 15th, the Prelude Show is going to be Nina Herzog, and her music by Moonlight. Nina is, we've had her on the show here, fantastic young, mostly Broadway style, but covers a wider range than just that, and uh, she's going to be doing a show with her group. And then on Thursday, November 19th, the incredible Francisco Torres with our first real Latin jazz band uh, coming in to, for a show at, at Campus Jacks for this season. So all of these tickets are available at campusjacks.com. And remember, all, all of the tables are socially distanced. People are wearing masks. There's temperatures taken. We're doing everything we can for uh, COVID precautions and making sure that you're safe and able to enjoy great food and live music uh in, in a beautiful setting i mean it's it's gorgeous so when you you know a lot of the a lot of places are um forced to go out into their parking lots and doing they're doing what they can i gotta say campus jacks has, has really done an incredible job with that outdoors uh outdoor venue it's pretty much a, a venue you're going to want to go to whether you can go outdoors or indoors so it's pretty great uh let me see uh make sure i cover everything here uh, some of the places you can check all this out, steamersjacks.com, steamersjacks.com, uh, YouTube and Facebook, Jacks Hideaway, and on Facebook, Campus Jacks. And uh, if you want to help, because, all, you know, if you can imagine all of these shows, all of the production uh, takes a lot of people behind the scenes and it actually costs a lot of money. Even just the subscription for this service that broadcasts costs money. So, uh, anything you can do to help if you've been enjoying these, you can visit the tip jar at steamersjacks.com. And I think uh, there's a little thing on the screen right there below me. Um, so please do that. Please buy tickets to some of these shows, especially this Thursday. And I'm going to be back really soon with Daryl Williams and Blake Aaron. And for now, we're going to go back to the Tom Dante qu- uh, Quintet and hear a little bit more from them first. See you in a minute. Blood will flow, flesh and steel are one, dying in the color of the evening sun. Tomorrow's rain will wash the stains away, something in our mind will always stay. Perhaps this final act was meant to contradict our argument. 
Nothing comes from violence, nothing ever could. For all those born beneath an angry star, lest we forget how fragile we are. Oh, now the rain will see how fragile we are. My tears from a sun. On and on the rain will fall. How fragile we are. How fragile we are. From a star, on and on the rain will see how fragile we are, how fragile we are, how fragile we are, how fragile. We Thank you.
a couple more songs for you. Here's um, Dave introduced this one. Well, this is sort of a modern adaption or uh, recreation of a very uh, classic, old classic. It's a bebop tune, actually, uh, by Charlie Parker. And uh, this is a Bob and I used to play in a trio years ago called Toxic Jazz, and this was kind of the way that we used to do this tune. It's called Scrapple from the Apple. Thank you. 
tune is a song called Revelation. We're, uh, we really love this song. We're happy to play it for you. We'd like to thank you again for coming out tonight. Uh, please take care of your wait staff. They have to carry your drinks an extra long way now because of all this. And we just want to, first, before we go, we want to give a big thanks to uh, the sound crew and everybody that sets up the stage here every night because all of this has to go away every night. Can't just sit out. And the wait staff and everybody brings out tables. Everything has to get set up for you fresh every day and cleaned and wiped down and de-COVIDified. And um, that's a word. Um, <laughs> so the urban dictionary. Yeah. So uh, I just want to give a big hand to uh, the staff here. Please take care of your, uh, waiter your waiters and waitresses and servers and... And, and um, especially we want to thank uh, Jack Jesper for keeping music going during COVID and keeping musicians employed. Thank absolutely. you, Jack. Absolutely. Jack and Tim Ellis and the lovely and talented uh, Golden, who's running our sound tonight. Uh, she's actually sitting in this van right here so that she doesn't have to listen to the awful band on stage. Um, no, I'm <laughs> just kidding. She's, she's like in there listening to a different station. Much better music than this stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. So anyway, here's our last song. Uh, it's a song called Revelation. And thanks again for coming out tonight. Okay, for all of you playing along at home, what we're doing in the solo section is we're taking it twice, and the keyboard player is going to play the first half of the first time. Greg Vale, you would be noticing, will be ta taking the second half of the first time. And then Dave will be taking all of the second time because he's greedy. <laughs> well, mainly because this tune was... Well, no, it actually wasn't. This is a... Uh, so it, I was going to say it, so it was a tune on a Robin Ford record. Uh, it's a Russell Ferrante tune. No, it's a tune. Russell Ferrante tune, who's a keyboard player. But Robin played with him in the Yellow Jackets, and so he wrote this fantastic tune for his uh, comeback record, Talk to Your Daughter. This is Revelation. Thank you. 
All right. That was Tom Dante and his quintet, which uh, is a quintet of a bunch of friends of mine. Uh, basically, Greg Vale on saxophone, David Murdy on the guitar, and Chris Barron on the keyboards, Bob Elefante on bass, and Tom Dante on drums. And they just performed live at Campus Jacks. That was actually live right now. And uh, now we're getting ready to do our little shindig over here. I was thinking as I was watching those guys, you know, Greg Vale and I met in 1984 and so we're coming up on 40 years but another way to look at it, which is even worse is i've known him through five decades now the 80s 90s the 2000s the teens and now into the 20s that's that's a little uncomfortable to think about um well he looks it but um so anyways moving on hey if you've been enjoying these shows this is our 33rd week of doing these shows uh if you've been enjoying them and you want to help contribute to uh, keeping them going, and this all is to help with the production that happens behind the scenes. Nothing to do with this beautiful face, but more about what's going on behind the camera and uh, all the production side of this. Please visit the little tip jar at steamersjacks.com uh, and, and throw a little something in the kitty if you can. And uh, hey, we're here for our show now, and we're going to be visited by Blake Aaron and uh, Daryl Williams, both two fantastic musicians. You may notice Terrence Love is not with me tonight. He is a little under the weather, non-COVID related, but uh, we're going to give him the night off and I'm going to tackle these two guys myself. And uh, I think to get rolling, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hear a little bit from Daryl Williams with a song of his called Here to Stay. And then uh, if all goes well, we're going to come right back after that and I'm going to introduce you to my friend Daryl Williams. So check this out.
quite possibly the busiest bass player on the national smooth jazz scene. He has shared the stage with many headlining artists, including Richard Elliott, Peter White, Gerald Albright, Rick Braun, Mindy Hebert, and many more. His R&B work has placed him in the company of Shaka Khan, Howard Hewitt, Angela Bofill, and others. Daryl has established himself now as a popular solo artist with chart-topping solo releases in recent years. His 2017 release, Here to Stay, made it to Billboard's top 10 and thrust him into the limelight with all the other headliners. Please welcome Daryl Williams to Steamer's Jazz at Jack's. Well, this might be the first time this has happened, but we're having some technical difficulties with Daryl right now, so he's not with us yet. So I'm going to have to try to stall, and if we need to cut to another tune, we can do that. But uh, hopefully he'll pop on here at any second. We did a little uh, tech technical test with him earlier, and everything seemed to be fine. So hopefully this will all get worked out really soon. So I thought I'd just take a minute and share one of my latest little finds. Uh, for those of you that know, I like to do um, uh, vintage shopping and uh, hunt for old things. I found this pretty cool little book. It's called Meet Mr. Kugat. And this is uh, a book, uh, basically, uh, regarding Xavier Cugat, one of the uh, one of the leading uh, originators of Latin jazz in uh, the United States. He was actually a year older than Louis Armstrong, and he died in 1990 at the age of 90. But I found this great book, and I just loved the cover. And then I just started looking through it, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know who this guy is. Um, but uh, it's got a lot of music, but it's also got these fantastic illustrations in it. You can see, and he talks about the different instruments, the maracas, and how to play them, the the bongos, the uh, you know all these all these different Latin instruments. But look at these illustrations. So it turns out that Xavier was also a cartoonist, and he did all the illustrations in this book. This book is from 1942, 1943. So I thought that was pretty cool, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. Also, I grew up on uh, mariachi music. And it's got the, the classic tune Cielito Lindo in here, which uh, all, many of you would recognize. But I didn't realize there was an opening verse, and that's in here, too. So I'm going to explore that. So that's about as much stalling as I've got. Uh, except, no, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go through the list of uh, dates still just to remind you that if you haven't bought your tickets for this Thursday night, uh, please do so. I'm going to be there with an amazing band of musicians called uh, the Pretty Dang Good Band. And it's Bill Cantos on piano and vocals and uh, Grant Geisman on guitar, Sal Lozano on saxophone, and uh, Lyman Medeiros on bass, John Ferraro on drums. That's this Thursday night. Please, please come and join us. And uh, uh, let me see, Sunday, November 8th, it's Lori Bell with Josh Nelson, Alex Frank, and Gene Coy. On Thursday, November 12th, it's Elena and George Gilliam with the Gilliam Quintet. I'm not sure who's in that group, but I, I know they always put a fantastic band together. Uh, saxophone Sal Lozano will be here with his own group, All In, uh, on Thursday, November 13th. 
Sunday, November 15th, it's uh, Nina Herzog and her music by Moonlight uh, Ensemble. And they're going to be doing everything from Streisand to Linda Ronstadt and everything in between. And then Thursday, November 19th is Francisco Torres and his Latin jazz band. And so we would love for you guys to buy tickets to these shows. Uh, and uh, just keep in mind, it's COVID safe and and uh, all the precautions are being met and everything everything possible to keep you safe while you're enjoying some great food and great music. So we hope to see you at one or all of these shows. Some people have been coming to pretty much every show. Uh, and seating is limited, so you want to make sure to get your tickets now. So what else? I think probably what we're going to have to do is we're going to cut to what was going to be his closing video. And uh, hopefully we'll get to his uh, technical stuff fixed up here and get him on with us. But he, uh, this is a tune of his called There's Always Tomorrow. And hopefully we're going to figure this out. But uh, here's a little bit of Daryl Williams, There's Always Tomorrow.
right, check it out. He's with us, Daryl Williams. How are you? Welcome, man. I'm good. How are you guys doing? Doing great, Daryl. Just so you know, uh, Terrence wanted to be here. Terrence Love, and he uh, he's a little under the weather, so it's going to be just you and me tonight. Cool. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Good to see you, man. It's been a, it's been too long. Man, great to see you. It's been way too long. <laughs> yeah. You know, I used but, to see you every week. I know. You know, Daryl and I used to uh, play in uh, a church together. We had a great little band there with uh, actually with Tom Dante, yeah, guitar player named Gannon Arnold, and yep. um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. A but we met singers. we met a long time before that doing um uh the KSB our birthday. No, we met we met long before that. We met 98.1 in, Jazz Festival, San Diego. Right. And that was in 19 uh like 90 or 91 or something 91, like that. You, you 90, were with Hollis 91. Gentry, right? Yeah, I was playing bass with Hollis Gentry there, and uh, you came and sat in, killed it, yeah. of course. <laughs> And I think you were on, were you on Nova Records? I was on Nova Records. Nova Records, because that was the, the uh, same label Hollis was on as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we were label mates. Yeah. Hollis yeah. was a good guy, man. It was, yeah. It was Great player, back. too, man. Yeah. 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 Hey, so where's your mask? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> this is my Halloween mask right here. All right. <laughs> now, see, if we were in person, we'd have to wear the mask. So right. This is cool. It's a yeah. virtual thing. How you doing, man? So what's what's been going on? Like like all of us, your your work probably came to an abrupt end at one point. But right, what'd you do in the meantime, and what's been going on? Well, the first thing was kind of adjust, adjust. You know, you have to, you know, rethink things and adjust to, you know, the new world basically. Because uh, you know, I had a really busy year planned. Right. So those all that stuff, you know, fell through. So you just kind of get into writing mode, writing music and, uh, yeah. you know, performing virtually like this. Right, like right. The way we're talking, but, you know, performing and just doing stuff like that, playing on records. Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you a cool thing I did a couple yeah, of weeks ago. A drive-in concert. Oh, you I did? Opened, yeah. I opened for uh, Richard Elliott and Rick Braun. So after each song people honk their horns rather than clapping. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was wild, but yeah. it was great, man. Yeah. Where was, was that? Big, it was uh, at Cal State San Marcos. Okay. But it was for California uh, Center for the Arts. Got it. Yeah. So, I've, yeah seen, it great. I, I've seen a few of those going on. I, I haven't done one of those, but um, I've been fortunate enough that, you know, Campus Jax has a really great outdoor stage setup. So we've been able to do some live shows with, audience and we'll have to get wow. you down there for that yeah uh, man I'm yeah it's really it's in. really great but uh yeah I, I haven't done one of the the um the drive through ones but that's uh that's a pretty cool thing it's it's been really fun uh to see people um uh innovate trying yeah. to get get live music going and and uh and even you know even just city to city it's different i mean i know orange county is different from la and i, I don't know right. about you know where you're out in temecula what the uh, city rules are but it's it's been a struggle for everybody and just been interesting to watch everybody figure out ways to do music and obviously uh the internet and quarantine videos and all that stuff has been one way we've been able to do it you know but um but that can only go on so long, right? Right. You you start getting tired of it, really. You you want to you want to get out there. You yeah. know what uh, was you know really interesting about Temecula is it was really up and down. You know they allowed us to perform outdoors for a while. Yeah. And then you know where I was uh, performing at, I ran an open mic with a friend of mine named Aaron Stevenson every Sunday at Zabber Thai Fusion in Temecula. Okay. Okay, so the whole thing is, the whole problem is, it was packed every Sunday. Right. So the health department was sending people down to take pictures, and it was uh, it was really weird. So, you know, the owner finally decided to shut down. It was getting too stressful. Right, right. Yeah. So he shut down, you know, permanently. Permanently? Oh, that yeah. Hurt. Oh, that's a lot of that going on, too. Yeah, it was too much. There was other stuff going on, but it was just too much to right. deal with. Yeah. So he just shut down. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but hey. you know, you you've always you've always got stuff like that going on. I remember you uh several years ago I came down and played with you at a I don't yeah, know if it's the same venue, but but uh you you keeping stuff going like in your own community and then getting out to uh the world and you know. You you uh in the introduction I called you probably the 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 busiest guy in that whole smooth jazz scene because it seems like it seems like you're the only bass player out there. Because you're in everybody's band, it seems like. <laughs> well, you know what else? Uh, 
almost every Saturday. I'm not there every uh, week, but I was, um, I've been performing with Rick Braun on his show, which is every Saturday on YouTube. Right. It's called Rick's Cafe. Yeah. So I've been playing on that. A couple of weeks ago, I played with Mark Antoine. Then before that, it was Greg Karukas, Peter okay. White, yeah. a bunch of other people. So, And then, of course, you know, Rick Braun, he did a couple. I played with him. And I did right. my own show last week. I actually hosted for Rick. Nice. Yeah, so that was fun. Yeah. It was great. It was great. So what, tell, you said you were doing some new music or writing new music. You working on a new record now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying. Right, right. Well, <laughs> trying to keep come on. It took you 10 years for the last one. How? <laughs> It We're going to see this before long. 2030, right? <laughs> <laughs> this one won't take that long. All right. You know, I just finished a song with uh, Jeff Lorber. Nice. Uh, a little over a month ago. That one's wrapped up. So I have a few more. I mean, I mean I'm just trying to get it done. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Hey, I'll be calling on your services. Well, I'm just, my, my microphone's right here waiting for you. So. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> cool, cool. I mean, awesome. I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to get my horn out of the pawn shop, but. <laughs> hey, if you need me for anything, you know how we do it. Right just call on. me. Right. You got it. All right. All right. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. So, hey, the, we were just, we just saw. We, so we were going to close off your video by showing uh, our, on this interview by showing a video, but because okay. of the technical issues, we had to show the video first. So we've already watched here to stay. But tell us a little bit about filming that. Well, because you know, it, 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 I mean, it all goes right down to this whole like making it pandemic, happen in quarantine. Yeah. Okay, I made some phone calls because I was gonna you know, originally record my entire band, right? right? Like a show and then mix it in with like some of the clips you saw. Right. But I woke up one morning. I think I woke up about 5.30 in the morning, six o'clock in the morning. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do this myself. I'm just going <laughs> to shoot a video. Uh -huh. So I got in my car, drove down to San Diego, and I was trying to find, you know, some places that weren't too busy. Right. Unfortunately, I couldn't find too many. So I found one spot that was right in front of a business, right? And it was it was kind of a back street, but every 10 minutes a car would come out. A few people wait. Right. <laughs> wait, it's not in the video. I took it out the video. Yeah, yeah. A few people waved as as they drove by and a few people walked by and waved into the, you know, yeah, uh, the iPhone. Right. Uh, okay, so then I said, well, let me go to uh downtown San Diego and I found a a a bridge right where I, I used to live I think when I was about 22 years old uh -huh. I think it was on um maybe fourth avenue so I found this bridge and I was like man this is the perfect spot it's not busy it's yeah. really slow here so I shot there and then the last shot you see is actually at La Jolla Shores and I'm sitting down right and I'm I'm holding the camera myself like this, <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like someone's filming me. All right. But I'm, I'm holding the camera myself. So it's yeah. just kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, our friend, Crystal Lewis, you know, Crystal, of course. Ever? Yeah. She, uh, she went to Montana and quarantined for two weeks so she could see her, her new grandbaby. Wow. And uh, while she was there, she shot a video herself too. And, she, I mean, she had two weeks to herself. You did that one day. She had two weeks, so she has all sorts of shots. And like, uh, you, I'll, I'll have to send you a link to it, but it's pretty fantastic. Awesome! I oh, want to yeah. see it. Hey, man, yeah, uh, I did all the editing, everything in yeah. one day. Yeah, all the video great. editing, and you know, that's great. Hey, man, <laughs> uh, we we. Oh wait, who do we got? Oh, look at that, Tom. What's up, man? Is he on? Wait, wait, hold on. Is is he on screen for everybody to see, Tim? Tom Dante. Look at Tom Dante doing a surprise drum drummer. To say hello to <laughs> <laughs> Hey, drummer. I'm good, man. Good to see you. <laughs> good. Hanging in there. You know, hanging. Hey, Tom. Tom, it's good to see you. Thanks for dressing up. <laughs> He's overdressed. Right. <laughs> yeah. We, we were just talking about how you used to play at church with us sh uh, shirtless. So, yeah, it's good. Or why he had a wife beater sometimes. You know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tom, we just saw some of your show, and uh, uh, I'm just about to uh, say goodbye to Daryl, so blow him a kiss. I love you, too. Love you, too, Tom.
Hey, man, please give the family my love. Actually, both of you guys, please give the family my love. Okay. Hey, <laughs> what's up, Greg? Greg Val, what's up, man? <laughs> I was just getting ready to say. You, you, you got to get know, gigs at Christmas, man. Second, I thought it was Santa Claus. But. <laughs> All right. Great to see you, bro. Come on, man. Right, awesome. Get out of here, Tom. Hey, Daryl. Okay. <laughs> thank you, man. Thanks for joining us tonight. Sorry about the technical issues, but I'm glad we worked it out so we could say hello. And uh, love you, man. I hope to see you soon in person. Love you too, my man. All right. All right. All right. We'll talk to you very soon. All right. See you guys. Bye. All right. Hey, folks, we're going to cut away now to a, a song from our next guest, Blake Aaron. He did a, a recording of Europa that we're going to watch. And then we're going to bring him on live to uh, to say hello and to talk a little bit. So dig this, uh, dig this recording right here, Blake Aaron. Thanks, Daryl. You got it. Hey guys, it's Blake Aaron, and I hope everyone's staying very safe and healthy out there. And I so look forward to when this is all over, getting out there and playing live for you guys. And I hope to see everyone very, very soon. Blake Aaron has been releasing billboard charting smooth jazz albums for well over a decade. His fluid guitar style shows all the influences of the greats, from Wes Montgomery and George Benson to Lee Rittenauer and Larry Carlton. His solo career includes appearances at major venues and festivals all over the world and has built him a worldwide fan base. He is also very active on the local scene, bringing his stellar band to venues all over the Southland. Blake has also been active writing and playing for television and film and hosts a popular syndicated radio show called Blake Aaron Live. Please welcome Blake Aaron to Steamer's Jazz at Jax. All right, welcome back, everybody, and welcome to my friend Blake Aaron. Blake, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Tony. It's good to see you virtually, if not in person. I know. we got to play together again. And I noticed we have competing guitar walls, although your guitars make you money. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize you had such a collection. Check you out. Wow. Well, I've, got a, I've got a few. I, you know, I like to write the country tunes. It looks like you even have a mandolin. <laughs> I, I, have mandolin. No I, got a, I have a little cigar box uh, ukulele and, and a, and a re regular ukulele. I've got my nylon string and, you know, all, all that to play four chords. Well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, you know, four chords have never sounded better. Right. <laughs> um, so how are you doing, man? It's it's been a while since we've spoken, and I'd uh, uh, love to hear just what's been going on through all that. By the way, uh, I let Daryl know also, Terrence Love 
would usually be with us tonight and he wanted to be here tonight, but he's not feeling well. So we're, we gave him the night off. So it's just you and me. And, uh, uh, but anyways, I, I know that you, uh, well, you're exciting all by yourself. Oh, that's what I was hoping to hear. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I hope Terrence uh, feels better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's not, not COVID related. So you're safe. Um, so tell, tell me what you've been up to these last crazy eight months or nine months that everybody's been living in a new world. Well, I mean, you know, like most musicians, uh, pretty much all my live gigs uh, were canceled. Uh, but, uh, you know, thank God I had a lot of studio work. Uh, I've been doing a lot of production. I was able to fortunately uh, take the time to finally finish my CD called uh, Color and Passion. And we released that in September. And uh, it, it ended up uh, doing really well. I'm surprised people are, you know, buying cds uh, in this day and age as well as you know during this pandemic but yeah. uh they uh they are we we've got uh, number one on amazon sales for a little while and uh, yeah. uh we have a new single out from the, the cd that's doing uh really well and a new single coming out in uh, january so uh, we're excited about that and um you know uh i was able to produce a couple of uh, really talented artists and so I've been basically kind of sitting at home doing music and ah, good for you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, de definitely the, those of us who've been uh, set up to record at home, it's, it's been a little easier transition because even though, you know, it was a, it was a big shock at first when everything just stopped. Sure. It, it being able to transition into, uh, you know, having this to focus on has been really helpful and, and uh, yeah, I'm so I'm sure you've been doing a lot. And I, you know, I wanted to ask you on your new album, which I I'll admit I have not heard yet. But as I was reading about it, um, if I if I read correctly, uh, Adam Holly produced a few tracks or a couple tracks, right? Just one. He produced just one. one. Yeah, I I just thought that was really interesting because, uh, and and uh, I wanted to ask you about that because obviously you're a guitar player, he's a guitar player, you're already a producer, so you know theoretically you could do all this yourself. But I found I I think it's so interesting and great that you would go to another guitar player and say, produce me. You know, like, tell right. me about that, you know. You know, I, I I just always thought that sometimes a producer likes to be produced, you know. It's, right. uh, I there's 11 songs on the record, and I produced uh, eight of them. Uh, and uh, the other three, I just wanted to kind of mix it up a little bit. So I had uh, Darren Ron uh, produce two of them. Yeah. And it did really well. And Adam is just, you know, just kind of such a fresh – sound and a fresh artist and you know i just think right. that we can uh learn from you know instead of looking at other guitar players as competitors right right yeah i'd rather look at them as you know people that we can learn from each other and i met adam um at actually we did uh europe together we did um oh, nice. uh the jazz festival out in portugal uh, called mallorca and he's just wait, 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 real, real, I, I don't mean to uh cut you off but i don't think they realize it no i don't think the audience can hear it but Hey, uh, in the control room, can you guys mute your mic over there, please? I'm hearing a whole lot of pinging and talking yeah. and, and a party going on. I was trying to concentrate through that. I know. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. But you were talking about. No, I, I met him in Mallorca and, uh, you know, we just kind of hit it off. And, uh, you know, I, I just feel like it's better to make a, you know, a team out of uh, other musicians sure, sure. as opposed to uh, uh, competitors and, you know, and he and I have talked many times and I just, we I've said, you know, man, I've learned a lot from you. And he says, man, same thing. You yeah. know, so I just feel like other musicians can, we can always make each other better as opposed to, you know, feeling like, Oh, I can do that better than he can. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I think I, I've never really thought through the issue of, um, you know, I've, I've had other guys obviously produce stuff I've done, but um, about just directly having for me, like having another trumpet player on the other side of the window. Right. Say, you know, directing me or producing in that way. And I, I just found that really interesting and just made me think through, you know, that'd be an inter interesting thing to do to have another trumpet player approach, you know, getting me on tape in that way, you know. It's it's just, yeah. I look at it as something I would have never done on my own. It's just, right. you know, right. I wouldn't have done that. And same with the, the songs with Darren Ron. Yeah. And the cool thing I, I love about that, uh, like with Darren, is he just sent me a blank track uh, tracks with no melody. Right. And he said, you know, does this inspire anything with you? And, yeah. and it did. I mean, the, the first track that we did uh, together was called Groovers and Shakers, and that did really well on the radio. And there was just something about that track that 
I wrote a melody in, in 10 minutes and I just, I laid it down yeah. and I sent it back to him and he loved it. And there it was. And there's no way I would have ever thought right. of that had he not sent that track. Right. Right. I, I did a project like that with Rob Mullins years ago where, you know, we were just trading idea, you know, ideas back and forth like that. And it, it's, it is, it's exactly that. It's, it's a, a true collaboration. It's like, it is never would have all over this record, by the way. What's that? Rob's all over this. Oh, record. is he really? Oh, oh right, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, and he yeah, plays, yeah. wow. Yeah, he Rob really Price. plays some amazing, amazing stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I've uh, I've always had this thing uh, about co-writing anything where I, I always think that, you know, a lot of people, and, and maybe you do this, I don't know, but a lot of people get into that. Well, I wrote, you know, 75% of the tune, you wrote 25, you know, I never yeah. think that way. I always think that if you had just if you had just one idea in this, it still defines what the song is. That's right. So I, that whole collaboration process, whether it's a little bit on a tune or a lot, I just you know it's it's fun when that comes together and when you find somebody you can work with. Because I've I've gotten together with other writers and we just kind of stare at each other for a couple hours and go, yeah, this isn't working, you know. Sure, sure. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's great. That's great. Is this this your fifth album? Is it is. Right? Yeah. Fifth, right. Yeah. And uh, the the one I played on was a long when I right, right when I was getting to meet you was a long time ago with like uh, I remember Benoit was on it. that was your second one right is that right Yep yeah and that was called uh, with every touch and uh, you know I, I I still talk about that because if it wasn't for that I would have not been at Saddleback for eight years I think because I believe that I got the call from you to to sub for Jason. Uh, because oh, you right. recently done that session with me for With Every Touch. Right, right. That's right. Yeah, yeah and, you played, right. and you played great on that, by the way. If, if you guys want to hear some great Tony Guerrero, uh, he's playing and on who my, doesn't? That, that's right. Who doesn't want to hear great Tony Guerrero? Uh, <laughs> he's playing on my record called With Every Touch, which was a long time ago. But uh, you came in and nailed it, and that was uh, Mike Whitaker producing that. Right. Yeah, my, my, Mike's out of Nashville, right? Uh, he is now, yes. He is. yes. Oh, okay, he's yeah, yeah. For quite some time, but uh, he he's been in Nashville. Wow, you know, I want to say he's been there for about twelve years now. He he is a fantastic musician. He sure is. Yeah, yeah, he sure is. Um, so uh, tell tell me what's next. Obviously, the, this album just came out, and you you can't jump out on the road right now. Uh, you know what's kind of next in the foreseeable future for you. Well, a lot of the, the gigs that were canceled from last year are going to supposedly happen this year. I'm supposed to go back to Spain uh, th this year. Uh, that that festival was canceled. Uh, we were supposed to do uh, the, the one in uh, Pennsylvania, uh, Burke's Jazz Festival. Right. Uh, that's supposed to happen again You know, this March. Hopefully that won't be canceled. So a lot of the gigs from last year are supposed to happen next year. Uh, I was able to uh, do a CD release concert, which was great. It's Bagatini. They have oh, good. Uh, up at Spagatini. That was just last Sunday. Nice. And, uh, I was, I didn't know what to expect. I was a little concerned. You know, it's on a Sunday night, you know, the coronavirus, but we sold out. So I was, uh, you know, I was, <laughs> I was concerned, but uh, we ended up uh, pulling it off. Well, we'll definitely have to get you out at Campus Jacks. It's, it's a great, great spot for the music and the audience. And uh, yeah, we'll have, we'll have to get you out there for this. Oh, for, I'd love to. I've been there many times and I've yeah. had a blast and, whether it's playing with you, actually, the last time I was at Campus Jacks, I was with you and Tom Dante. Right. Oh, speaking of Tom Dante, well, have a, have a surprise guest. Not so, not quite a, the surprise now. But uh, uh, waiting to say hello to you. They just finished a show at Campus Jacks, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, Tom Dante and Greg Vale. Oh man, Tom and Greg, how you doing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, Greg. It's it's hard to friend? tell What's which up? one's uglier. <laughs> I know. No, 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 it's not. It's easy. No, no, no. We know. We know. I mean, it's it's been so long since I really have, you know, interacted with a real breathing musician. They're both a sight for sore eyes. Right. I know. Now there's, there's actually breathing musicians on this call as opposed to before. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but now, guys, how, I, I, how I'm just playing with you guys. I'm just playing with you too, Blake. Yep. How'd the show Congrats go tonight? on the new album, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, all right. Yeah. We were watching the interview before, and it's uh, yeah, it's great to see you doing well. Oh, thank you. Thanks. It, it's been a you know for all of us, it's been a crazy year. But you know, thank God that uh, people out there still want to hear music. So right. <laughs> yeah. right. maybe maybe more than ever. 
Uh, by yeah. the way, what did you get that chair from the set of Star Trek? What is that thing you're? Oh, this with? this one right here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the arms uh, go up and down so I can Got play it. guitar. Okay, basically. Do they make the sound? Do they boom? Do they do that? <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. Uh, hey, Greg and Tom, how'd the show go tonight? Oh, uh, actually, I'm sure not to watch it. <laughs> I think I think it went really well. I mean, considering we were just making it up. You know, and just everybody was kind of picking a song and doing a song kind of thing. And we I, really didn't worse or anything. So it went really well. I'll tell you, it was, it was nice to hear Dave Murdy play some jazz again. It's been a long time since I've, I've heard him. Oh, play. yeah. You know. He still put that distortion thing on, you know. <laughs> you got you know what? the guitar players on the distortion. Yeah. I know. It. <laughs> Tonight was actually my first night. I've known Baba for so many years. Tonight was the first night I'd actually played with Baba. Oh, yeah, it sounded like it. Oh, uh, Bob is great. Kidding. I played with him for years. Well, you got to excuse us guitar players because most of us, even though we play a lot of jazz, most of us started in rock and roll. So that, uh, you know, creeps through uh, uh, even our jazz, it kind of comes out. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Even, some of, even some of us trumpet players started in rock and roll. Yeah. Right. I, I, I was way more about this when I was. Oh, were you really? Years old. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Wow. Oh, oh, always been a huge kiss, man. Wow. And, and, you know, truthfully, I was really into rock and roll in junior high. And as I got into high school, I, I knew I wanted to do music, but I wasn't, it wasn't like about the trumpet for me. I just really loved music. And uh, I was playing drums in a rock band. And, you know, that's what I was into was Zeppelin and Kiss and, you know, all that stuff in the late 70s. And it wasn't until... Um, our, my junior high teacher came to this high school to start a jazz band. It was the first time I'd ever done anything in a jazz band. And he brought in a, a tune by Chuck Mangione called Children of Sanchez, which yeah. at that time was, you know, basically jazz rock. And it was the first time where I was like, wait a second, I'm playing like rock music on my trumpet. Yeah. And it was like all these lights started going off. And that was, you know, it started my, my uh, love affair of the horn, really, and of what in my mind at the time was jazz I, I hadn't dug into what jazz really was at its breath but it was it started because of rock and roll so and this know. thursday night at campus jacks i'll be playing with Greg weissman who is the guitarist on that children of sanchez album oh, wow look at that look how it all together. comes together that's right oh grant's great yeah he's great same thing for me i mean you know started as, as a rock and roller and then i uh, got introduced to guys that were kind of rock with a little bit of jazz, like Jeff Beck. And then, right. then from there, got into like Larry Carlton and then Pat Metheny. And then I kind of went backwards in time until someone said, hey, you know, you got to listen to like Wes Montgomery and, you know, yeah. these guys. And then I got into the horn players like Charlie Parker, John Coltrane, Miles Davis. And that opened up a whole new, you know, where chord changes. Wow. Yeah. The concept, you know? Yeah. That was it for me. Like learning about Chuck and then reading about him and, oh, he was really into a guy named Dizzy Gillespie and Art Farmer. I'm like, who are they? And you just right. keep going back and back and, uh, you know, ended up at Louis Armstrong. So. Sure. Yeah. Well, I think, I think we're like coming to the end guys. Hey, you need wow. to ask, hey. of, I mean, of our, our careers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Been there for a while. Totally I'm done. Tough. <laughs> um, well, well, let me, just, let me just check my script. Hold on. Uh, Greg's got something to show you, by the way. Oh, he does. What is this? I, I oh yeah, I like that picture. It almost nice. looks like red tattoos. <laughs> nice, Greg. <laughs> Whatever you do, do not sit on that Santa's lap. Right. You, know, yeah. you know what? So many kids thought I was really Santa at Halloween. Uh -huh. We were. It was like it was astonishing. So many kids were like, "Hi, Santa." Hi Santa, they were all saying hi to me. You know, Matt Matt Johnson for years. I, I don't know if he still does it, but every Halloween, his uh, he had a costume of uh, Angry Santa, and he would he would answer the door on Halloween as a you know basically oh, a drunk, drunk Angry Santa. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> this and uh, I, Angie did my. This was my Halloween costume. Nice. nice. <laughs> oh, Mike Tyson, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mike Tyson. I thought that was Jacote from Star Trek or something. Yeah. yeah. Like, although, I mean, if you'll notice, a few more wrinkles than Mike Tyson, but right, whatever. Right. You know. and, and none of the actual brawn. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, about, and about the same uh, brain power, I think. All right. Hey, guys, I'm, uh, stick with me. I'm going to do a couple of little announcements here. And that before we go... Uh, Close out. Oh, Let me think. Oh no! Look at this. Oh no! There's still more to come. What am I talking about? 
we're gonna we've got another video from Blake right now, so I'll, I will be saying goodbye to Blake, and then I'm gonna come back and introduce uh, something that's gonna close off the whole night for us. So, and wow. with that in mind, Blake, thank you for being with us. It's great to see you and uh, talk to you again. Love thank you, Blake. Thank yeah. you, Tony. Congrats, thank you, Tony. Congrats on the new Howard, and and uh, your uh, my best to uh, your wife and kids and. Um, and sorry for bringing Tom and Greg on. No, that's right. no we love you anyway. <laughs> love you guys too. Uh, it's been a blast. Thank you so much for having me. All right, we're going to hear, uh, and since you're still here with us, tell us about this video we're going to see for Groovers and Shakers. Oh, this was uh, from a gig that I did uh, with Najee uh, at the Empress Theater up north. And uh, Najee's got an amazing band, and we just cut the video and then. Uh, uh, released it and ended up being the official video for Groovers and Shakers. Beautiful. All right, man. Thanks again. We'll see you soon. All right. Take care, you guys. Thanks again. Bye-bye.
heading towards the end of our little show here, and I've got a couple of subs for uh, Terrence, who's not with us tonight. Although I realize looking at you guys right now, you, right now you are like polar uh, uh, photo negatives of each other. <laughs> From the shirts to the hair color, even the background, everything about right. the Pretty, not not so much, <laughs> something, something like that. Well, I'm I'm glad you guys were able to pop in after your little show. I I actually didn't. Uh, I, it, he had told me, but I sort of uh, had escaped my mind that your your show was the pre-show to this one because usually we've been doing that after this yeah. show. Right. right. So from now on, I'm just going to let people know that you guys open for me. Right. <laughs> that's I how think, that. That's how I, that goes. I, I, yeah, you know what? Whatever, man. It's fine. and then you hung around to watch the show. That's yeah, right. <laughs> if if I mean if that helps you sleep better at night, it's fine with me. I, I can use anything right now. Right, right. <laughs> All right. So listen, everybody. Uh, I'm not going to run through the whole calendar of what's coming up because I've already done that a couple of times. But I am going to encourage you to please, please, please uh, buy tickets for this Thursday night. I'm coming there with. Uh, Bill Cantos on keyboards and vocals. Grant Geisman on guitar. He's, they're both He's good. good. Grant Geisman on guitar. Uh, Sal Lozano on sax. Uh, Fantastic. Lima Medeiros on bass. John wow. Ferraro on drums. And, that John Ferraro guy, he's really good. And neither of these two guys. So oh, even better. What, what better reason to buy tickets to a show? So right. please join us for that. We'd love to see you out. And uh, again, if you would like to, if you've been enjoying all these streaming shows and the concerts, please know that it, uh, it takes not only effort, but it takes finances to get keep these things going. So if you want to contribute a little bit to that, you can uh, do so at steamersjacks.com and throw a little bit there in the tip jar. And I'll make sure that Tom Dante doesn't get his hands in the tip jar. Um, we've already, already dealt with that issue and his parole officer. So... Right. Be sure to check out all the stuff we're doing at steamers.com, steamersjacks.com, Jack's Hideaway on Facebook and YouTube, uh, Campus Jacks on Facebook, and uh, keep supporting the restaurant and keep supporting live music. And yep. uh, before we uh, before we send you off out into that good night, uh, we're going to send you off with a couple of tunes from last week's this previous Thursday show. Uh, Andrea Miller was there with Ron Kobayashi's trio, which uh, I, I believe is Steve Dixon and uh, Bob Elefante, if I'm correct. And yeah. um, here are a couple tunes from that show. It's uh, Crimea River and Caravan. And in the meantime, I'm going to say uh, Terrence Love, feel better. We'll see you here next week. Tom and Greg, thank you for uh, keeping me company right here. And thank you guys all, all right. for watching, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye. Take care.
Thank you. 